Surround sound decoders have been around for many years. A real-life example is Dolby Pro Logic, which dates back to the late 20th century. This method of decoding the surround sound audio has also been referred to as vocal removers primarily due to their abilities to remove the center channel and stereo audio where most vocals are kept. By developing a Bluetooth speaker about a year ago, I had accidentally discovered a new method for removing the center channel of stereo audio playback. In this video, I will show you how you can build this for your own applications using some of the most common electronic components. Let's get right into it. Looking at the bill of materials, you will first need an audio amplifier of some type. The surround sound decoder is a preamplifier and cannot provide enough power to directly drive a speaker. Two NPN transistors will also be needed. Any NPN transistors should work fine, but for this video I will be using two 2N3904 transistors. Next, you will need two 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, two equivalent resistors with resistance between 30 kilo ohms and 200 kilo ohms, four equivalent resistors ranging between 10 kilo ohms and 30 kilo ohms, and four more equivalent resistors ranging between 50 kilo ohms and 200 kilo ohms. Some other components that are recommended but not required for this guide is a solderless breadboard and a 5 volt voltage regulator. The schematic as well as the bill of materials are contained in the project's dedicated GitHub repository. The link to that is in the video description. Now onto the build. Start off by placing the NPN transistors in this orientation on the breadboard. Next, place the positive side of the two 10 microfarad capacitors to the base pin of each NPN transistor. On the negative end of those capacitors, place the two resistors ranging between 30 kilo ohms to 200 kilo ohms. I will be using 75 kilo ohm resistors. On the other end of the resistors will be the connection to the input audio. Go ahead and connect your input audio now. To activate the base pin of the transistor, you will need two of the four equivalent resistors ranging between 50 kilo ohms and 200 kilo ohms. Place one connecting to the positive rail and negative rail as shown. Also do this for the other transistor. Next thing we will need to do is provide the transistors with power from a power supply source. First, place two of the four equivalent resistors ranging between 10 kilo ohms to 30 kilo ohms on the collector pin of the NPN transistors and place the other ends on the positive rail of the breadboard. I will be using 18 kilo ohm resistors. On the same rail, you will also connect the inputs of your audio amplifier. Next, place one end of the other two resistors ranging from 10 kilo ohms to 30 kilo ohms on the emitter pins of the NPN transistors and then the other ends on the negative rail of the breadboard. Also place a jumper wire connecting the two emitter pins as shown. You'll want to make sure that all of the connections to the power rails are not shared with the amplifier's power connectors because they will be powered by the 5 volt voltage regulator instead. Go ahead and place the 5 volt voltage regulator on any free space on the breadboard. A heatsink will not be required for the regulator as there won't be that much current draw from the preamplifier. Go ahead and set up the regulator on the basis of its schematic. Connect the output pin to the power rails that are occupied by the transistors. You want the input power pin to connect to a jumper wire and to the power rail on the other side of the breadboard. On that side, connect your power source with the appropriate voltage and current limits. You're now all done and can listen to the final product. Here's a small sample of what it sounds like. And here is the original audio.
As you can hear, the mono channel has been completely removed, allowing only the out of phase stereo audio to be played. So now that we have this thing built, you're probably curious as to how it works. So what this preamplifier actually does is it splits the phase in stereo audio. The left and right channels of the audio go through the base of each transistor and the mono audio of both channels go to the emitter of each NPN transistor. Since the emitter of NPN transistors consists of a diode, the mono audio of both channels can't escape once going through the emitter which only leaves the out of phase stereo audio to remain and sent to the output. I truly hope that this video was helpful for your needs. Be sure to like and subscribe with notifications so that you'll never miss a new upload on the channel. I'll catch you all later.